Sudan has been in headlines for reasons we all know. There has been chaos in the capital Khartoum. Sudan is the third largest country of Africa and any development in the country impacts not only the continent but beyond as well. With me is Sudan's ambassador to India, so welcome to Vion. And the first question to you is an obvious question. What is the situation right now in the country? Okay, thank you very much for receiving me. And before that, I will just want to give you an idea, a background about uh, the uh, unfortunate events that which actually started on April 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the rebel forces attacked uh, the uh, Sudanese armed forces and attacked the re residents of the president, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, the president of the Sudan uh, Council and uh, 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 and that attack also uh, expand to include uh, Khartoum International Airport and the radio uh, TV station, radio and TV station in Sudan, the national one. And uh, uh, the most important thing is that this attack happened the same day that a meeting between. President Al Burhan and the commander of the rebels was scheduled to take place. Mm -hmm. And according to, uh, to that, the military forces, the Sudanese armed forces, responded accordingly uh, and uh, we, they were successful in uh, responding and defeating the rebels and inflicted them a high level of casualties in lives and uh, equipments. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a very small background to the uh, clash which was interrupted in, on last Saturday. It happened on Saturday, but if you talk about the situation right now in the country, yes. how chaotic is the situation, how worrisome is the situation, if you can talk about, yeah. especially in the national capital, that's yeah, Khartoum. Yeah, this, this clashes take place in the capital Khartoum and uh, the Sudanese armed forces are adopting uh, a combat strategy which is very sensitive to civilians. And uh, the Sudanese armed forces are fulfilling their commitments in maintaining the security and uh, stability of the country. But at the same time, having in mind this battle, these clashes are taking place in the uh, densely uh, area, uh, rural area, uh, uh, urban area in Khartoum and that is why the Sudanese armed forces are very keen to uh, respond to the rebels attack mm -hmm. and to defeat them and at the same time to save the lives of the civilians in Khartoum. Mm -hmm. Do you expect any kind of international support uh, to make sure that the current crisis can uh, be resolved? Uh, there is the, the four country uh, grouping as well that was uh, essentially overseeing a lot of developments. Uh, if you can talk about that as well. Yes, as you heard maybe uh, that uh, the international community, the African Union, the IGAD and the other countries, uh, uh, they, are, they expressed their interest and availability. Uh, and they send the calls to the both parties to stop the clashes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my, our government thinks that this is a, a, a battle which, in which we are defending the, our country, Sudan. Mm -hmm. And I th we think that this is an internal battle, internal issue, mm -hmm. and it should be left to Sudanese people to solve, them, to solve the problem b between themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, our government, uh, my government, is completely not accepting at the right time any sort of international interference. So no international interference, you will not allow that to happen? Um, it's the chaos in Khartoum? Uh, no, no international interference. This is a Sudanese issue, an internal issue, and it should be solved by Sudanese themselves. And what do you have to say about the quartet, which is US, UK, Saudi Arabia, and UAE, their role? They, they are all active. They have been actually active in Sudanese politics for the last few uh, years. Mm -hmm. And uh, all their efforts is appreciated. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we want to say that all the efforts by all uh, our all friends and uh, our all Sudanese fractions to 
convince the rebels to integrate in the armed forces failed. Mm -hmm. And it is failed mainly due to the refusal of the commander and of the rebels. Mm -hmm. Sir, if we talk about the situation in the city, uh, the diplomatic missions, yeah. are the diplomatic missions safe because there have been reports of diplomatic uh, dip, uh, diplomats being harmed amidst the ongoing chaos? Yeah, I think our all our concerned authorities in Sudan is very aware of its responsibility to protect uh, the premises and the employees of all uh, foreign diplomatic missions in Khartoum. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, um, uh, taken the necessary uh, measurements to ensure their safety. But in a such a situation, mm -hmm. uh, definitely a small uh, incidents will happen here and there. Mm -hmm. We express our sorrow Mm -hmm. for the, uh, all our friends, our, uh, uh, the, the embassies, uh, the diplomats in Sudan and to our friends out Sudan for those minor forces. But I think they understand the situation and the complications. Mm -hmm. And they will be able to, uh, to, to, to understand that we are doing our best, mm -hmm. our utmost. Mm -hmm. But as I said, in such a situation, may, minor and small incidents will happen and sometimes are not avoidable. Mm -hmm. So are you sending a message to European Union because I believe the European Union ambassador was harmed? Of course we are very sorry for that. Uh, we believe those uh, diplomatic missions they are in Sudan to help Sudan and its development plans and other and bilateral and multilateral uh, engagements mm -hmm. uh, and when any of them has uh, been uh, like a target for any such attack, even if it is minor, we feel very sorry for that. Mm -hmm. we and, uh, but uh, we understand this is sometime happening during these uh, critical and abnormal situations. Mm -hmm. So what about the situation of foreign nationals? Because that has been a big worry. There are a lot of foreign nationals in the capital city. So what message would you like to send to them and the various foreign governments who are very anxious about their foreign nationals in the city? Uh, also, uh, Sudan, uh, Sudanese uh, forces, uh, armed forces, are also trying to do their best in saving the civilians, whether they are Sudanese nationals mm -hmm. or foreign nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are uh, for regarding the foreign nationals. I think uh, m more protection, more uh, attention should be given to them. They are our guests mm -hmm. and uh, we are very keen to uh, ensure their safety and uh, we are we think that uh, my, my, my message to the international community and to the foreigners in Sudan that this battle is about to finish. It will not take long. It is only a matter of few days mm -hmm. and things, things will come back to normal mm -hmm. and they will be very safe whether they want to stay at their homes in Sudan or they want to leave to their countries. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there was a ceasefire that was also looked into. What happened to that ceasefire? Is it holding or it looks right now that it's not holding in the country? And the yeah, government? this ceasefire is announced yesterday for 24 hours, uh, but unfortunately uh, it didn't hold and uh, rebels violate the ceasefire as soon as it started. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it has been violated, so it looks difficult, do you think, that any ceasefire will hold given the current situation and as you pointed out, the rebels responsible for breaking uh, the ceasefire? Actually, from the government side, we expressed our view and stand many times that, uh, and we did it uh, in practice last, last yesterday, we understand the importance of this humanitarian uh, ceasefire and truce to mm -hmm. uh, make the civilians able to get uh, their necessities, uh, necessary things from the from the market. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as uh, as as we told you, uh, as I told you, uh, this uh, this truce was violated immediately uh, by the rebels yesterday. Mm -hmm. But in the future, we are really still open. We are understand and uh, the, the importance of this uh, ceasefire mm. for sometimes for civilians, for other for people in the hospitals and uh, 
uh, it is very important to have this ceasefire. But as I told you, unfortunately, the rebels violated it as soon as it started. Mm -hmm. uh, now coming to the India bid, there are approximately 3,000 Indians in the country. That's according to the Indian government estimates. What's the situation of the Indian, Indian nationals who are in the country? The Indian nationals in the country, uh, I can't describe their situation in different of other uh, foreigners, nationals, or uh, even Sudanese citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very obvious that all these people are uh, staying and living under the stress of this uh, war mm -hmm. and these clashes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have my sympathy with them, mm -hmm. uh, but I just also want to make sure or to assure all the Indian government that Sudanese competent authorities are taking all necessary measures to protect foreigners, including Indian nationals mm -hmm. in Sudan, and we are we will do our best to uh, make their decision whether mm -hmm. they want to stay or leave the country uh, possible as soon as situation is changed in Khartoum. Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to the Indian nationals, any plans you have been? discussing has the Indian government reached out to you for the evacuation of the Indian nationals? Yes, I met the uh, officials of uh, Minister of External Affairs yesterday uh, here in Delhi and uh, we discussed these uh, topics, these issues and uh, we are exchanging information about, uh, about the Indian nationals who are stranded in Khartoum now and uh, we have some ideas and plans to make their return back to their home possible within coming days. So there is a plan which is being chalked out for the uh, evacuation there of the is, There is a discussion. The, there is, a, we understand the interest of and the request of the Indian government mm -hmm. to evacuate their nationals and we received that request mm -hmm. and that one is under discussion and consideration by authorities in Khartoum to decide the best way to make it possible. Mm -hmm. How many countries have reached out to Sudanese government for the evacuation of their national stranded in the country? I can't tell you exactly the number, but like three, four countries, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more or less. Mm -hmm. But some countries approach Sudan in this regard. Mm -hmm. So, how do you see India's role in the current situation? Do you think India can play a role in terms of anything which the Sudanese government uh, might think of. I'm asking this because India is seen as a country who has a lot of good uh, vibes in the continent. Uh, the EM was in Africa. We are helping Africa a lot in capacity building. So, do you see Indian role? Of course, I mean, uh, according and depending and, you know, counting on our bilateral, strong bilateral relations with India, India has been, always has uh, the, the, the chance and the opportunity to, to play an important role in uh, its relation with Sudan. Mm -hmm. Our uh, bilateral relations has been very strong throughout the last decades and that is since the independence of Sudan in 1956 mm -hmm. and uh, during the, 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 the non-alignment movement also India was playing an important role in that movement mm -hmm. and even after the disappear of that I mean that uh, that, that uh, movement uh, by the end of the cold war mm -hmm. the cold, cold war last uh, in, the, in the in the 90s of the last century mm -hmm. but still india maintain a good relation strong relations with uh, its friends uh, in Africa and especially Sudan mm -hmm. and uh, India is uh, an important country and uh, India is you know achieving now one of the highest rates of growth in the world mm -hmm. and we know that now it is uh, number five and that's uh, the biggest economy in the world mm -hmm. and uh, in all these uh, circumstances India is an important country to Sudan and uh, there is a big possibility that it helps Sudan to overcome its difficulties in, in, the, f in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially we, uh, we know that there is a, a serious interest between our two governments, our two countries, to enhance and promote their, their uh, economic and uh, trade 
relations. And uh, also we have a good coordination and cooperation uh, on the for international level. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this, uh, just to tell you how much we look at India as uh, a country very important to Sudan mm -hmm. in these times and in the future. Mm -hmm. So, just want to go back again to my question on the evacuation bit. How precarious or dangerous it is right now when it comes to the evacuation? Because there are street fights happening right now in Khartoum. Yes. So, if you can just give a perspective to our viewers, yeah. how dangerous it could be right now for any mission to take place. Yeah, that is what I meant when I told you those requests were uh, conveyed to our combatant authorities in Sudan mm -hmm. uh, to uh, study them and. Uh, answer the question about, about the readiness of the situation in Sudan for this operation, mm -hmm. evacuation operation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as you know, maybe that Khartoum International Airport is uh, badly damaged mm -hmm. and uh, other uh, also uh, airports outside uh, Khartoum mm -hmm. are not, uh, we are not sure if they are ready, mm -hmm. uh, the runway are uh, in a shape that they can receive uh, mm -hmm. planes or not. Uh, and this is uh, from uh, this number one. Number two, also, we need to understand and assess the, situa the, the, the security situation on the ground. Mm -hmm. As you said, there is uh, clashes now in the streets mm -hmm. and around the airport and, uh, and uh, around many uh, government and uh, departments. So the, the, the logistics of bringing those people who want to be evacuated from the, where they are staying now mm -hmm. to the airport, to the aircraft, mm -hmm. is still a question. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but as I said in the beginning, we are studying, we are uh, asking our uh, authorities to tell us about the perfect, the right, the correct time to make this operation happen. Mm -hmm. So my last question to you. It's much more about global geopolitics. We saw the conflict in Europe and we know that there are a lot of conflicts in Africa. Do you think somewhere the world fails to give due attention to conflicts in Africa as compared to a conflict, one conflict in Europe? Uh, maybe the comparison is not uh, correct in general because uh, the, the conflict in, in, in Ukraine and in Europe is between uh, big powers between Russia from one side and the United States on the West and Europe on the other side. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, yes, m definitely any uh, country, any region will uh, make, will give and pay more attention to the problems, to the conflicts which happens in its surroundings. Mm -hmm. And that is why we see the, 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 the countries like uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, mm -hmm. uh, United States, Britain mm -hmm. are very uh, now involved and, uh, in, in, in Sudan conflict and uh, our neighbors are also uh, uh, involved the African Union also mm -hmm. expressed their, uh, their, their uh, worries and, mm -hmm. uh, about the situation in Sudan and uh, the IGAD also decided to send the uh, presidents of Kenya and uh, South of Sudan and uh, Djibouti mm -hmm. and uh, this is all to reflect the, the, the engagement and the, the of, the, of the regional uh, countries and neighbors with our, uh, our, our uh, 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 matter in Sudan. And uh, even these uh, this, this, uh, visits uh, are not being possible now because of the situation of there is no, there is no uh, suitable situation mm -hmm. for them to arrive land in Sudan. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure welcome. speaking to you, getting a perspective of the situation on the ground and also the situation of foreign nationals, including Indian nationals in your country. Thank you so much, sir. Thank for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.